So, bit of a weird one. I've just landed in Doha. Check out some new running routes and enjoy things over here. So, so we're currently checking out some of the locations here in Doha, looking at the different areas where we could potentially organize some races. And this is a pretty cool area. We've got a air conditioned track. It's all undercover with air conditioning. It's all about 750 meter loop and the path is reasonably wide so you can get quite a few runners on here so it's quite interesting to see it all and uh, yeah there's something that's really unique to this region because obviously in the UK you would never have air conditioning on a, a running area but here it's needed because the temperatures get up to 50 degrees sometimes 40 50 degrees which is crazy hot it's the desert people need to be able to train so this is a perfect initiative from the local government to do this sort of stuff so really interesting a bit different uh, to what we used to but yeah excited to see this and more sides like it this is happy <laughs> So, I'm trying my first Karak. Karak. Karak tea. From? Tea time. Tea time. Okay, this one is Oxygen Park. You can see here, this is like a little tunnel area and it's all air conditioned, so there's like all the vents down here. But the rest of the park is, so I've got tarts and tracks, and we've got grass areas and waterfalls. It's pretty cool. There's lots of things you can do here. Obviously, right now, in the middle of the daytime on a working day, very very quiet but i imagine on like weekends and that sort of stuff it's oh. it's full of people but if we're doing races we'll do them in the morning and keep it nice and relaxed from that point of view but yeah it's a pretty cool area massive park and it's part of a wider facility with lots of different things going on one of the major areas in qatar and um, so yeah pretty cool so i am in the pearl area which is a pretty cool area in doha got all the shops and all that sort of stuff it's pretty quiet today i think it's because it's a weekend i'm not too sure if everyone just goes to the beach or whatever <laughs> but it's just it's a bit quieter today but it's beautiful nice marina all the boats behind us also it's really hot so everyone just stays indoors most of the time so people don't really walk around that much they kind of drive places but yes yeah, it's, it's pretty hot i've got a run later on today and i'm gonna go down to the, the corniche which is got a kind of a, a track that you can follow and I'm gonna run down that and it's actually measured out every every kilometer so that'd be good. Yeah I'm gonna try and find a gym as well to do a bit of weight training because I've been trying to keep good with it. This morning I did some lighter weights in my hotel that I've been staying in and did some like Bulgarians and a few Romanians nothing intense but for some reason I'm not like overly hungry or I'm not like probably tired at all even though I did that long run this week so I think I'm actually getting to half decent shape and um, but this next week I'm not going to be doing much in terms of look at our airways like in terms of long distance stuff just kind of keeping it consistent and doing some runs each day and just keep them keeping my fitness up and then when I get back uh, the week after I'll, I'll get another long run in which will be good so yeah another update on my marathon training for the Chester Marathon coming up in just less than a month's time. So, this morning I am heading on the Corniche, which is the kind of major road on the coast in Doha. It's where all the massive buildings go. It's got a huge water area where you can see fantastic pearl. You can see all the sights of Doha from here. It's like the most iconic stretch of the city and they've got a little path that runs all the way down it which you can run on measure out every few hundred meters so you can see how far you've run and uh, it's really hot out here so I thought I'd go up at like 4 30 5 o'clock to try and make sure I get a few miles in before it gets really hot so I'll let you know how I get on I always do a little bit extra on an hour back just to make sure I get that wiggle room in in terms of 
making sure I run past 10 miles without going past my car at the finish. <laughs> That's the worst thing ever when you go get to your car and you haven't done enough. Um, feeling okay, very hot and humid, but halfway now on the way back and uh, gonna grind it out. Real talk there. That's like just almost eight miles and my heart rate's sky high. Just for an easy run, it's like 170, which isn't like what I need to be doing. Um, I want to keep training, I want to keep be able to train and recover. So if I gas myself on a long run, or a longish run anyway, I'm just not going to be able to do anything in the next few days, so I need to stay smart. So I'm walking probably at 14, 15 minutes per mile pace. My heart rate's still in the 140s, 150, so obviously I haven't come down yet, so I need to just let it relax and then maybe I'll shuffle for the last mile. It's just one of those things, like I never really had that in my locker to be able to just walk and it's something, I suppose, out of necessity that I've had to create for myself because when you take a long time out of twice a day training and conditioning work and all that stuff which you had to do at, at Loughborough in kind of an elite sports environment to then do pretty much nothing for a few years and then try and ramp it back up again you can get away with quite a bit because of the natural like talent I suppose and you can run a 5k 10k reasonably quick and but when you get past like top 10 miles essentially it starts getting a little bit tougher and it starts getting for someone who trained for like 400 800 and raced at 1500 years ago 15 years ago it's it's more difficult than I give myself credit for I suppose sometimes and I would normally just kind of push on and get my heart rate to 185 and just just be stupid with it but got my phone with me so I can talk to you for a bit of distraction while I'm walking back in this blazing hot sunshine but yeah eight miles in the bag that's okay not what I wanted two mile walk it's just the way it is Right, do you know when you see those videos on Instagram where someone films a whole thing facing the other direction? I just did that, talking about this run. <laughs> Idiot. So I just finished my 10 mile in Doha along the Corniche. Beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Amazing views. I'm not too sure you can do a better run in terms of what you're looking at along the route. Unbelievable. The thing for me, I was aiming to do 10 miles, but I did about eight miles, walked a mile, and then ran a mile really slowly at the end. So it wasn't quite what I planned. I think I set off a little bit too late. So I set off around about five, 5.15, I think. So 5.30 I probably started, and I got to like six o'clock and it started getting a little bit hotter. So I probably should have set off at about five o'clock. And I think then if I'd have done that, I would have been able to do the 10 miles pretty easy. Again, that's not a long way when you're doing a marathon in just less than a month's time. And I've been doing three runs a week, 10 miles each, and then over the last three weeks, I've done a 16, a 20, and a 22 mile. So I've built up my distance on there. So I feel reasonably comfortable with my training. I feel like I can get around the marathon in probably right now without really thinking about it with a pair of those shoes on. I've got about 320, I think I could run. And I'm hoping to do 315 well, with the pace of there. So I've got a few weeks to do another couple of long runs, but this next week is quite interrupted. I'm over in the Middle East, so I've got meeting set up around here that I'm having and I won't be able to do much long running based on that today because it gets hotter throughout the day. So if, if I try to do that at night time, it would be the same problem, except it'd be even more hot. So I'm, you actually just leak sweat. But this time of year is the hottest time of year. So the rest of the year, probably from November time, November, December, January, February, March, it's reasonable. If you get up early enough, you can do a run. There's plenty of elite athletes come out here for training in the winter really popular location obviously it's the center of excellence the world cup was here at this point in time so the fifa uh, center of excellence is here so top footballers coming here to train they have air conditioning pitches they have air conditioned running tracks they've got everything you need to be able to do a long run i just decided to go for a run at a really humid time of year <laughs> at a point, of point in the morning where it was probably too hot but anyway that's my general training that's my plans for the marathon i hope you enjoyed that video lots of different vlogs from different runs I'm not too sure if people find that interesting, but that's just me running. I suppose that's what you've got to do. You're training for a marathon, you've got to do a bit of running. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to catch me on Instagram, I'm at Matt Woody Wood. And for more on run through, check out runthrough.com.